Hi, I'm Zixian Ma, one of the developers of Momo2. In this video, I would like to show you what Momo2 can do for video counting and pointing, which includes both object counting as well as action counting. And in the second part of the video, I would like to show you a comparison of Momo2 versus Gemini 3 on video counting and pointing, which I would say both models do a pretty decent job in counting and pointing, but they're still not perfect. And these are still very hard tasks for today's vision language models. Okay, let's get started. First, let's try with a pretty simple video. For this one, I chose a classic, beautiful skyline view of Seattle that has Mount Rainier and Space Needle. Let's start with something simple, like point to Mount Rainier. For this one, I think our model should be able to get it correctly because it's built on top of language model, which has knowledge about Mount Rainier. And even if not, it should be able to identify uh, the only mountain in this slow motion video. Okay, yeah, so it's spot on. It gets this pretty easily. Uh, and let's try something else point to a space needle, which again, I think it should be able to get this correctly as well um, because it's a well-known landmark that our language model should know about. And even if not, it does look like a needle. So there is a good chance our model knows about it. And yeah, um, our model got this one correct as well. It correctly point to space needle right on top of it. Okay, so now let's try something a little trickier. What about point to the this building. This is a more ambiguous query because there are so many buildings here. So it could point to a space needle, but it could also point to another building. So let's see what our model points to in this case. Okay, yeah, again, it, it points to a space needle as the tallest architecture in this video, which is correct. Okay, what if we try point to the rightmost building? So this one should have a more clear answer. So it's the this building right here, this small building on the very right. And because our model was trained with this queries involving spatial references, it should be able to get this, this one as well. Okay, right, yeah. So it does point to the correct building here. Um, okay, so let's try something even harder. I see that there is a half of a Ferris wheel here. It's half hidden by a building in front of it. So I'm actually not sure if our model will be able to identify this, but let's just try it. going to the Ferris wheel. Because it's so small, our model only sees a few pixels of it, especially in this video case. For every video frame, it only sees a low resolution image of it. Okay, but here it gets it correct. So it points to this Ferris wheel here even though it's half hidden by another building. So that's pretty cool. Okay, now let's, um, how about let's try something a little harder. Let's do even harder. How many buildings are there? This is really hard for the, the model because there are so many buildings and they are also blocked by each other. So in this case of occlusion, the model might not be able to see every building clearly. Okay, so this is what our model points to. So you can see that it does point to most of the buildings, uh, like Space Needle, this one, uh, even though some of the points are slightly off, um, mostly because the buildings are, are so cluttered, but it does try to point to all the buildings. So um, yeah, this one, it seems like it got this one wrong because it, this is a tree, but you might think that there is another building behind it. Um, but yeah, it tries to point to most of the buildings. And in this case, it says there are uh, 46 of them, which is roughly correct. Okay, now let's try something a little different. What if we try a different video with um, slightly more motion? Okay, so we see that this is a video with a dancer doing uh, flips. So for example, I'm curious how many flips does the dancer do? And since our model is trained to point and count actions as well, and let's see what it points to. So in this case, it points to the, this is the first flip, second flip. 
third flip, and then fourth flip, and then this is the fifth flip, and that's correct. The girl does a total of five clips and a flips, so that's pretty neat. Okay, now I want to shift to the demo comparison. So let's try, um, for example, on the same video, we can just use the same query actually. Let's also ask this question to Gemini 3 to see what it answers. And let's just um, call Momo 2 again to just have the model outputs side by side for comparison. Okay, so our model already returns with an answer and let's just wait for the frames to be visualized as well. Okay, it does, it's taking a long time for Gemini 3. It's probably maybe because it's a really large model or maybe because it's using some sort of test time scaling, but we, we don't know under the hood what it is. Versus, I guess, in comparison, um, since Momo2 is fully open, uh, yeah, you will know exactly how Momo2 does it. Okay, so yeah, let's see again. I think, yeah, this is basically the same output. Uh, as we saw before, Momo2 identifies five flips, and that is correct. It points to the center of the girl every time she does the flip. Now let's just wait for the output. Okay, so Gemini's output are also visualized here, and we can see that it also does. In this case, it actually identifies four flips, which is one less than the total number of flips she does. Okay, so it looks like Gemini also does pretty well at identifying the timestamps where this action happens even though in this case, the point is slightly off the girl. Uh, I guess this is because Gemini outputs bounding boxes better. And in this case, we also uh, prompted Gemini 3 to output the bounding boxes and we visualized both the center point of the bounding boxes for a more direct comparison, as well as the raw bounding box output. Yeah, so in this case as well, the bounding box is roughly correct, uh, but again, it's slightly uh, off and not directly on the girls and this is I guess slightly worse. This is actually not um, on the girl's center. So yeah, so this is what Gemini 3 answers to um, this question. Okay, now let's try something else. What if we try, um, yeah, on this video, let's try again. Um, let's try a harder query. Why don't we try, for example, um, because this one has the time difference from day to night. Let's try something like point to Mount Rainier at night. And let's see what Gemini 3 and Momo 2 point to that. So I would expect the model to point to like a later timestamp instead of an earlier one because that's date. And then, um, yeah, we asked it to point to Mount Rainier at night. So this one uh, not only tests the model's spatial understanding, but also its temporal understanding. It needs to do, uh, do well to be able, uh, it needs to do well in both to be able to answer this question correctly. Okay, so yeah, looks like our model just output this timestamp like right around um, second six, which is roughly at night. Um, it's not perfect, but I guess it's acceptable. I think a better answer would be even later timestamp, but I guess our model can improve on the temporal understanding part of the this task. Okay, so Gemini is still thinking. It's taken, I guess, more than one minute to think about this query, uh, but that's okay. We will be patient and wait for its answer. And of course, we didn't do um, any sort of like crazy optimization on the speed, uh, but we could like cache the video and speed it up. But we are not also comparing the speed here, so we just wanna see kind of what the output looks like.
interesting that it's taking through. Okay, so let's see. Oh, okay, so this one, um, Gemini actually does a better job at temporal understanding because it identifies their later step towards the end of the video. So yeah, it looks like Gemini understands time better than Momo too um, through this one example. Uh, we can also see how it does on other kind of curves. So uh, what if we try the same curves we tried before? How many buildings are there? Um, because this is a pretty hard one. And let's just run Gemini 3 and Momo 2 again to visualize the outputs side by side. Okay, so yeah, again, we see that uh, this is the output by Momo 2. Uh, it's basically pretty much like before, uh, what we've seen before. It just yeah tries to point to as many of those buildings as possible, uh, even though it misses a few ones like this ones, uh, kind of in the middle, um, between like small and and this really tall buildings. Yeah, again, Gemini is taking a long time, but we will be patient and wait for its output. Okay, it, the output comes back. Let's see. Okay, nice. So I think it looks like Gemini identifies the bounding boxes of the buildings pretty well, uh, even though it fails to do this for the smaller buildings uh, in the front because they're it's kind of hard to tell them apart. Yeah, so this is how they do. And that's it. Thank you.